Yeah, so this, this is quite poignant scene. I mean, Mum's the only one left alive. So all the family's waving goodbye, so I'm concentrating on our little group. If you imagine what an apprenticeship is like in a, in a big works, clocking on, clocking off, I just wanted to get away and see, see something of the world. It was just a stage where I was setting off on. Uh, it happened to be quite momentous, was it? <laughs> And I must have been very hyper towards these tremors because I wake up and, and you feel that. And then I say in the morning, did you that tremor last night? No. Nobody else felt it. And I started to doubt my sanity, if you like. They're reporting the sea temperature going up four degrees. That was a significant thing. And we've got another one here. What's this one? Oh, this is the evening news. Volcano man left in search of adventure. <laughs> All the Birds have started coming back in November, and the seals and the penguins, because of the Antarctic summer's approach, in spring down there, and uh, suddenly they were gone again. The place was, we went out and it was eerily quiet. By then, I convinced myself the place was going to erupt. And this is a winter scene now, uh, yeah, mid midwinter feast, I think, is it? Our Christmas. Uh, that's Phil, Phil Myers, the base commander. I've been saying to the base commander, I don't think we ought to stay here. And he said, oh no, it's, it kept ignoring the symptoms. So when the shackling came, I think I was packed, expecting that we might evacuate. And she left, and I, that's when we had that big tremor in the hangar. Somebody went outside and come running in and said, look at this, look at this. Went outside, and then that's where I got it on film. So I did grab my camera, fortunately. And there it was going up, just like an atomic, mini atomic cloud. We went down to, to launch the boats, which are only 40 foot dinghies. Well, the boats were high and dry, the sea had gone. Well, there's no two ways of it. The expression, shitting yourself, uh, springs to mind. Especially when I saw that flipping ash cloud coming across. And then the smell of sulphur. And you're breathing that sulphur, then you think, oh, oh this could be it. This ash was falling, and then the, the, white, the island was white before it started, and it all just turned black, and about a foot of ash fell. The eruption caused strange atmospherics. I mean, you never had thunder and lightning in the Antarctic, but we did that night. And it just blacked out all radio signals. I think the first con contact was with Adelaide Island, a, a fellow base, and then they contacted the outside world. Uh, we weren't uh, evacuated until the next morning. The nearest ship was the Chilean supply ship. The Plata Pada being Navy had a couple of the, the old Bell helicopters. It was the next morning, I can't remember exactly what time, it was daylight, the eruption had simmered down and they stood off the island and flew in these helicopters. One bell was a, could carry one passenger, the other one could carry two or three, so it was only, you know, it was quite a few shuttle in and out to get us off. When you're down there, nature is so powerful and it's such a great thing that when you come back, um, everything seems, ooh, I don't know, um, petty or insignificant, insignificant. It's certainly, uh, was like that. that, that view that there's much, there's something much bigger than all of us out there, you know. <laughs>